Hello everyone, hello Mac friends. I hope that you're all doing really, really, really well. Um, so hello, um, we've got another very exciting Mac Chats today. We're going to be doing a live with Shin Cartography. Um, but first, I just want to say, firstly, thank you to everyone who's watched and supported all my previous Map Chats. It's really great. I'm gl so glad that you guys are enjoying it and watching them and getting useful and um, kind of fun information out of them. And also, um, this <laughs> today is a little bit more uh, ratchet than normal because um, this tomorrow is going to be the last night that I, I live in this flat, so we'll be moving uh, as of tomorrow. Um, so normally I have a tripod <laughs> to put my phone on to do the live videos, but today I'm I'm having to hold my phone. Oh, first world problems. <laughs> but it does mean that um, I have absolutely zero upper body strength, <laughs> which means I might be a bit like, woohoo. Um, and then lastly, as always, um, if the connection's just like a bit crazy, um, sorry about that. We have had absolutely glorious sunshine for like three months. I think it's rained maybe once. Um, and then today we've had the mother of all storms <laughs> and I was literally like trying to swim to get home today. So um, the rain might affect the connection, but who knows? Um, what's going to happen so at some point Shing's going to add herself into the conversation but yeah how are you all doing I hope that you're all well um I hope that you've not been like having any quarantine blues um I went live last week um when I was in Valencia I went to um to stay a night there I'm really lucky that I live pretty close by um to Valencia um, and I went to the city of arts and sciences and it was beautiful and I showed a few of you around but I decided not to post it um, but yeah, so I'm just let's all cross our fingers that it's going to work. Hello. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. <laughs> I, as I say, I was just saying, I hope that the connection's all good. So if at any point I just freeze, just shout, Eve, okay. you've disappeared. <laughs> But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today for a Mac Chats. Um, I really appreciate you coming on and I really admire you as an artist. I think your style is wonderful and I think, you know, you've done such a good job building a following and stuff. So I'm very excited to talk to you today. Um, so if you kind of want to introduce yourself, um, tell us a bit about how you came to be a cartographer. So... Um, my name is Shing. It's kind of an abbreviation of my full real name. And I started drawing maps about 10 years ago. I wow, okay. So it's, <laughs> it's a hobby that I've had for a long time. And I write a lot of fantasy stories. In high school, I used to take study halls just so I could draw anime and write <laughs> stories. Like I nice. wanted to be a mangaka so bad. And when I was like 19... I was writing a story with my sister and she, we made a map to plot it. And she jokingly said, you know, no offense, but your map is better than your story. <laughs> and that's what <laughs> kind of made of making maps. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. So you just kind of started from there and then, so how, how long ago did you start your Instagram? I haven't scrolled all the way back to the beginning. I think in 2016, um, somebody told okay. me I posted too many selfies on Facebook, so it started <laughs> off as like a personal account for my selfies, but then I started drawing more and more, and so you'll see anime and my cosplay in the way back years, and then I think I was around like a year or so after that, 2017, that it started picking up for cartography, and I switched it to my art page. Yeah, there's no such thing as too many selfies. I mean, you're a very beautiful girl, so you've got to take you. selfies, like, otherwise it would be a waste. Um, but it's cool that you've got other stuff on there as well. But obviously, we're all really glad that you've switched to doing maps because that's what we really love. <laughs> um, well, that's really cool. So um, kind of how did you um, how do you come up with your maps? Um, do you, are they always exclusively kind of like taken from fantasy stuff? Like, 
I know that you travel, so do you use that as inspiration? Yes. So I draw real places if I'm in that place. Um, you sometimes, like when I was in Arizona, I drew a map based on Tucson. But a lot of the maps that you see of real places are usually commissions. Like I did one of Baja, California and uh, Baja, Mexico, because my mom was in the Baja 1000 race a long time ago. And so I drew that for her as okay. a birthday present. I've drawn ancient Rome, um, Arizona, a small island in Japan. So I draw usually real places for people. Otherwise, I like drawing fantasy places. That's definitely my favorite part, being a fantasy yeah. photographer. And do, do you generally draw your own fantasy locations or do you kind of like do adaptations of other fantasy worlds? Is the majority of your work made up of commissions now or kind of like... So I do originals when I can, but right now I have a lot of commissions lined up and I'm also working a part-time job that isn't art related. And so I'm only drawing usually on Saturdays right now. And when I do an original, it's all, all, all new, all things I made up myself. And I'll take something like Athenaeum. I saw that in Tennessee when I lived in Tennessee and there was a street called Athenaeum with a library on it. And I loved that name so much. Yeah, it's beautiful. An map based off of it. <laughs> That's really cool. Like that you can take stuff from real world and turn it into fantasy because there's so much inspiration around us, right? Like even as you say, like a street name or something, can you be like, oh, I'm going to save that one for later. <laughs> like that's a juicy, a juicy name to use there. So that's really cool that you've done that. Um, so in terms of like how you prepare to draw a map, do you have like a particular process that you follow? Um, or do you kind of just like have at it? <laughs> I do have a process. The first thing I do is I sketch out in pencil first. And it's usually not something I post on Instagram that much because the pencil doesn't show up. So it's hard to like really make it eye catching. Yeah. But I use my, like I have a handy dandy ruler. I use a ruler on every single one of my maps and I'll trace, not trace, but like all the grid out and draw out the world first and make sure there's a place for everything. Like make sure there's a place for the compass, for the banner, if there's an emblem, anything special. I make sure it yeah. all fits on the page before I go. And then the con drawing out the continents, probably my favorite part and drawing it out with the ink and doing the coastlines. That's always the best fun part. Yeah. I find that part really therapeutic as well. Like just doing the kind of like lines or the kind of like outlines of the coast. It's just like, I could just do it for hours, which is handy because they usually do take hours. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, and do you, um, do you have any specific like, kind of pens or papers that you use and where do you get them I had a few questions from people about like which pens does Shing use and what paper and where can I get it <laughs> so I use heavy paper um I use a ten dollar notebook that I bought from Michael's with a coupon sometimes they're on sale for just ten dollars and sometimes you get four percent off and it has like a nice heavy um feel to it so that I know that the pens won't seep through but right now I'm using exclusively Micron from Soccer of America and they've been giving me lots of supplies and such and that's why I have a giveaway too because they gave me a giveaway bundle and I like them because they don't bleed and also they're true black like I've used pens off eBay before and you get them and then like the black's kind of purpley yeah but not with these like and if you let them dry for like an hour a day you can do the tea wash over them and they don't bleed and that's also yeah. something I've learned the hard way that pens bleed <laughs> yeah they absolutely do but those yeah the micron ones are really great like I use those ones as well um so how did like obviously shout out to Shing's giveaway if you're watching and you haven't joined Shing's giveaway go and join it. It now. <laughs> go and join it now um so that's really cool like how did that come about have you like got do you contact them or did they contact you or I reached out I one day was like you know what if it's not going to come to me I'm going to go get it and I reached out to probably 10 or 12 different companies that had an easy contact here for affiliate or sponsorship and I just said hey this is what I do. I'm a fantasy photographer. Can you help me? Like, yeah, not exactly the most profitable thing in the world, but it's something I have to do. It's something that fills me with joy. Can you help me? And then 
they're the ones that responded. I got one yes out of all the no's. Well, that's really cool that they like want to support you as an artist and they obviously seen your maps and they're like, damn, we helped make that with our pens. So that's really great that they've like um, helped you out with that giveaway. And it's as it looks like a pretty cool bundle. Um, so yeah, again, shout out, please go and join Shing's giveaway. <laughs> um, and so I'm oh, sorry, I've got my li list of questions here because otherwise I'm, I'm going to forget them. Um, how would you, this is a question from somebody um, from the Instagram story. How would you say that your style has improved and or changed since you started drawing maps? So the thing I've noticed personally is I'm drawing smaller and smaller. And my older maps, like the trees are bigger, the mountains are bigger, the words are bigger. And now that I look at my maps, I am so small and tiny in details. I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? The smaller I am, <laughs> like the more trees. I don't like drawing trees. Like, and so I've noticed they take that. They're so, and especially the style I do, like it's like I draw every single tree. And it's like, why do I do this? And then I see the end. I'm like, okay, I like it. That's why I do it. But I've it pays noticed off. that... <laughs> Like I'm more intricate now because I've done this for so long and I've and like I've done so many maps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think it's kind of like fun to do the details sometimes. Like, yeah, it does take a long time, and sometimes you're like halfway through and you're like, why did I start it like this? <laughs> but as you say, it definitely um, pays off to pay to spend just like that extra time doing stuff. Um, and so, do you normally do larger format? maps because from the pictures that I've seen like on your Instagram it looks like you use quite large paper sometimes um the two sizes that I usually commissions for are the large which are the poster board size the 22 by 28 inches and then I do the smaller ones because I travel so much the smaller ones are so much easier to do but I can't do the large ones right now because I don't have a desk I'm working from home so my art desk is my work desk right now filled with all sorts of computers and such and so I, and love, I love doing the large ones. They're really fun. But usually they come with a border. And the borders are the part that's really, really difficult for me. It's a lot of double measuring, double lining, making sure everything's lined up, which I don't like to do. But I know it's really important for the end result. Yeah, absolutely. I do actually have a question from somebody about how do you do your fonts or your borders and or your borders? Because they're really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so with the borders, I measure them out. And that's um, probably my strength is that I'm really good at reproducing. I can look at something and draw it really well. And so I can look at um, a sample or something that will inspire me and I'll draw it out. And then I can use that to do the borders or I do like the geometry and I'll, I'll find a pattern that I really like. I can do that with fonts as well, which I will once again, line out and trace not trace out but um, draw out first. But with some companies that I've worked with, they have a very specific font that they've created. And so if I have to do very tiny words, or I need it all to look very uniform, I will print it out on a paper and use my light board and trace out the words. Just because it's yeah. so hard to like have to write something out four or five times when I can just print out the font that they specifically need in a uniform yeah. size and have it throughout the map, which you'll see on like, yeah. the apotheosis maps, like all the fonts are the same. Well, that's really cool. Like it is difficult. Like and now I've started to do more different fonts. Like it's, it's easier when you have fonts that you use all the time. But as you say, if somebody has like a really specific font, it's going to take you a long time to Palatino. memorize exactly how to draw that font um, and like obviously scale it to the different sizes that you need for banners or whatever it is. So um, which light box do you use? Um, because I'm, I have to try and find one, but. <laughs> so I have a light pad. The cord just broke, so I have to see if I can get another cord for it. And if it's not the cord, I'll get a new one. But there's a $20 one on Amazon that I purchased that's just nice really really thin and so it's easy to work with because it just lights up underneath it instead of like the old school old huge light boxes I don't know if anyone ever used those before but that's what we had used in high school with the huge ones with the lamp oh I think we broke up for a minute there we're back we're back people 
<laughs> um, I've got another question from somebody in the chat. Sorry, I didn't write down anybody's like usernames. I just wrote these down really quickly and I was like, oh, I should have written people's names down. Um, but what is your favorite part of drawing maps? Uh, I really like doing the coastlines. I think it's really, really fun building the actual base of the world. Um, I sometimes will look up islands in our world itself. Like I've drawn the peninsula of Florida a couple times. I've driven, I've drawn the uh, uh, Iceland and Greenland islands just to make sure that it has that realistic feel to it. And so I really, really like drawing the continents. That's the fun part is creating the world and then filling it up is fun too. But when you first get to draw it, that's really great especially when you see it come yeah. out and you see all the islands come together and look really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, continents are really fun to do. And it's, it's fun to like play with different styles of continents and like the sizes and stuff, because there's so much interesting stuff on Earth as well as obviously then your imagination can do all the extra stuff. Um, but yeah, that, no, that's really cool. Um, and what, have you got like a favorite map that you've ever drawn? So the first map that was a large map that was all original was um, I said I want a large map, the 22 by 28, and I want it filled with everything you created. And I want you to give it a backstory and I want you to tell me about it. I want you to. And it was the first time someone had paid for me to do original art. And it was such a large scale a commission too that it was just wonderful that someone wanted me to do that and appreciated it so much <laughs> so I've just seen that question that's come up <laughs> have you ever taken a map by using ketchup and a napkin um no DM soda I have never done that it hasn't I ever occurred to me partly because I don't really like ketchup <gasps> spoiler alert I prefer mustard um but if ever I'm in a restaurant and I've got some ketchup lying around, I will try it. <laughs> Have you ever tried no, that? All stains. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> it sounds a bit messy. <laughs> I like to just put my hand on the paper and then just jiggle my hand around and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think sometimes, and like um, Amy, who I did the live with a couple of weeks ago, she she does like really cool maps with tea stains. Um, and there's lots of kind of like weird patterns that occur like in our lives, kind of like all the way that you see a cloud looking or you put your head on the pillow and you get it up and there's like weird lines or whatever. Like you can kind of get ideas for maps from anywhere, which is it's pretty cool. I think that's a fun, I think there's just like so much interesting stuff about creating a map. Um, so what, I've got another question. Longest that you've ever taken to complete a map? So 2015, while living in Nebraska, I started Middle Earth. And I finished it just before I moved to Minneapolis this year in like January. It took me five years. I just didn't want to do it. And I had this really, really intricate, like in-depth thought process, like how I was going to do the compass. Like I was going to do all the rings in the movie and I was going to draw them separately and make it really cool and unique and have like the star in the middle. And then it came around that I had to like actually sit down and do it four years later. And I was like, why am I doing this? Like I'm dreading doing this compass so much. It took me four years to sit down and draw it. I'm not going to do it because I've judged yeah. it so much. I'm just going to go a different direction. And I did, like, I just did a really nice wooden looking compass for it and finished it. Cause that was all that was left. Like I had to erase some paper marks or some pencil marks and draw the compass. And it took me years just to do it. And now it's done. And now I'm like, no, I don't want to sell it because it took me five years to do <laughs> it. It took me so long. <laughs> I took it to five, like I, it's been to five different States. It's, it's gone through so much. Like, now I just kind of, like, keep it to my own. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so do you, would you say that you, like, kind of bond with your maps in a way? Kind of, like, you have sentimental attachments to them? Yes, for sure. And then there's also, there's the, what is, 
imposter syndrome. There's the part of me that goes, this isn't good enough to let go. Like, I can't release this. Like, I do it. Nobody wants my art. And so I'll hold on to it for years. And then I'm, I find I'm, I'm dragging it. I'm hoarding it. And I have all these original artworks that just I might not want. <laughs> just because I'm afraid that it's my heart and soul. What if someone doesn't want my heart and soul? And so I just hang on to it and hide them. And then it's like, no, you have to let them go. This is what you're doing. This is why you're building up your Instagram so that you can give your artwork to the world. Yeah. No, I think a lot of people struggle with that feeling of like, oh, this is what I made. So therefore, like no one else is going to want it. Like it's not really good enough. And I think it's just generally with social media, you it's impossible not to look at somebody else's work and think, oh, their work's so much better than mine. Even if it's a completely different style, you can't like compare them really because it's so different like yes you're drawing the same thing but like how many famous paintings are there of like bowls of fruit kind of thing and they're all worth millions in this still a bowl of fruit you know <laughs> what really comforts me is that i recently learned that with tolkien's map he on purposely had his son do it to make it look homemade like he wanted a hand-drawn map and I have to remind myself, that's what other people want too. They want a map that is hand drawn by me. And that like yeah. kind of helps me get through that lump. Yeah. Would you ever consider doing digital maps or kind of like doing more digital artwork in general? I'm trying. I'm learning that right now. Um, I bought a drawing pad, but it was just so uncomfortable. It was too big for me to work on, which was weird maybe it was an excuse. So I bought an iPad, traded it out. And so I'm trying. But at the same time, I have so much work for my hand drawn maps, it's hard for me to give up the time to learn digital when I can be spending that time drawing. Yeah, which um, iPad did you use? Or um, which drawing pad did you use before? Um, I bought the Huon drawing pad. I don't remember. It was, I've sold it. Like, was it one that you little. like draw directly onto the screen or is yeah. it one that you draw and look at the digital. screen? So it was like the touch screen, draw on the screen with the pen. And then okay. now I have an iPad that has like drawing pad or the pen I can draw on the screen as well. Yeah. Do you, do you like the iPad? Like, I like it. It's just, there's a learning curve. Like I don't know what any of the functions are. And so I feel like for me, it's like a couple extra steps because, okay, I messed up. Now, how do I undo? How do I do all these commands? And so there's just learning how to work a computer as well is difficult, which I'm going to do. I'm positive I can do it. It's just, I, I, I think you definitely will. Be. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, it's like painful learning something new because you're constantly like, I think it's obviously work as, worse than a, as an adult because you think oh, I should just be able to do this. Like I'm a fully grown woman <laughs> I can't even like draw a, a square or something because I also like I've been trying to use my iPad um and just firstly like I do not have the discipline to just like sit there and watch YouTube videos and then try and replicate it and secondly like it's just I really like doing the hand-drawn stuff so <laughs> it's, it's hand-drawn it's, I know what I'm doing and so I feel like I'm just in a a spot of which I'm in my comfort zone I, and I know what I'm doing. I know what to do. I can control it and I don't get frustrated. And then I go on the iPad and it's like, I don't know how to draw a straight line. Like how are people drawing <laughs> circles when I can't draw a straight line, but I'm working on it. I am. It's, um, it's been definitely a goal for me to do because there are a lot of commissions out there for digital maps since they're so easy to like turn a vector and put into pamphlets and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and would you consider kind of doing other styles of map? Because normally, obviously, you do your like continent world maps. Um, have you thought about doing more of the dungeon map, city map style of things? Definitely. And interior maps. There um, there are definitely things I get asked to do. I can do them. It's just I don't have a portfolio. I don't spend a lot of time doing it. I'm in a really nice spot in which people really like my style that I have now. And so if I ever had a lull, I could go into it and branch out, but I haven't had the need to. But it's definitely something I could do and learn to do. I'm an artist and being flexible and learning things, but we like to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so you travel a lot, right? Um, it's one of your hobbies and kind of like something that you really like to do. 
where do you go? Where's the where's your favorite place that you've gone? Do you have any future travel plans? Obviously, after COVID. <laughs> so, um, I started traveling as a, as a little little kid. Our family, what we did in the summer times was my mom would just pack all. I have like four siblings, and so she would pack all five kids into a minivan, and we would either go to California or Missouri because that's where my two grandparents live. So I have spent every summer of my life in a, some type of automobile vehicle going places. Um, in 2015, though, I, I decided I was going to leave the US and do my first international travel. And then unfortunately caught the travel bug really bad. And so it's, it's a real, time. it's a serious <laughs> infliction. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough to live with. So um, in 2015, I went to Thailand. And then in 2017, I went to Taiwan. My best friend is a Hong Konger and she moved to Taiwan after studying in the US. And so I went and visited her there. And then um, I went again, I think in 2019, maybe 2018, I'm not sure. But I went to Thailand again and Vietnam. I was supposed to go to Japan in April, but they closed their borders five days before I left. I was supposed to leave. So April- That sucks so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard. It's been really hard because I was going to go again in October, but their borders aren't open. So I'm waiting for the borders to open and then I'm going to Japan. That's so cool. Like, um, so you'd say in general, like you're looking forward to traveling in Asia. Have you thought about traveling to like other continents kind of like Europe oh. or um, Australia? For sure. Well, my, my friend that was living in Taiwan, she just moved to Australia. And so I really, really want to go visit her there too. But I'm, I'm waiting for everything to settle. There's so many plans, but it's not like I can just go wherever I want. I have to save up and be responsible. When I come back from travel, I still have to live and feed myself and house myself. So I will usually work for a year or two and then save up and go. But Asia is just usually more affordable to go and be nomadic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So... That's usually and they have life. very tasty food. <laughs> <laughs> but and also, oh, sorry. Um, uh, I travel in the U.S. and I move a lot too, but I do a lot of contract work. So like I'm doing a contract job right now. And so when that's up, then I'll find the next thing. And if it's in another state, I'll pick up and go to the next state. And that's why I move around a lot too. Um, what's your contract work? Is it kind of, is, as you said, it's not related to like drawing maps. So right now I'm working for Activision and I don't want to talk too much about it because I have the gift of gab and I can't talk okay. about it. But right now okay. I'm working for Activision on a non-art related contract. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and um, do you have any other hobbies kind of like, um, like US based hobbies <laughs> other than traveling? Um, well, I like video games. I definitely play a lot of video games. Um, Right now, I'm really into League of Legends. I feel like I caught on to that really, really late, and everyone kind of teases <laughs> me, but I love League of Legends. Um, I also love board games. My family, um, they're my best friends. All my family and my, all my siblings, we talk to each other, we call each other, and we text all the time, and we play board games together. And so, like Flux, Mysterium, all the board games I love. Oh, yeah, Mysterium's so good. <laughs> I played that the first time for a couple of years, and I was like, wow. This is really cool. <laughs> I think also um, there's one called Code Names, um, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I can't decide whether I love it or I hate it. <laughs> it's both. You love it when you start, and you hate it when you end. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then, have you got any? This is another question. Do you have any tips for beginners? Um, I'm really nervous about starting drawing maps. <laughs> So another thing that really helps me get through drawing is reminding myself that no one's going to do it for me. It can be very, very intimidating to ink your, your paper because it's permanent and it's not very easy to fix mistakes on paper. I, and I understand that. That's why sometimes things turn into mountains because I make a mistake and it's like, okay, well, no, that's a mountain. Um, but be patient. It can be very, very easy to just let yourself go and go really, really fast and not double check, not double measure, not even it out. And that's when you kind of see your map kind of tilt to the side or look kind of like wavy. It's because you're going too fast. So remind yourself it's okay. 
calm down and you can do it. And then when I notice it too, I'll do it too. I'll start working really, really fast and want to get through it. And then I start making mistakes. Like I'll smear the paper or I'll, I'll turn the paper, crimple the paper. And it's because I'm going too fast. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes, especially at the beginning of a project, it's very easy to just be like super excited about what you're drawing and like just kind of like plow into it. And then you realize, oh, wait, maybe I should have like taken a bit more time to think about spacing or measuring or whatever it is that you've <laughs> um, kind of like messed up on. Also, your cat is adorable. What is its name? <laughs> Can we be friends? That's little kitty. <laughs> yeah, I saw oh. a picture of your cat. They're, they're twins. Yeah, Jagger is, yeah, he's a very beautiful cat, but he's also very meowy. Like, I mean, I've never had a cat before Jagger. Um, I've always had dogs. Um, my family's always had dogs. And then um, when I met my boyfriend, he had this cat. And <laughs> we kind of just like instantly bonded. Um, and now he's just like my shadow, but very noisy shadow. <laughs> and a very hungry shadow. <laughs> yeah, if but I it's lock fine. her out, I can't lock her out because then she'll make noises. So she's, she's going to just travel around be quiet I promise <laughs> no it's cool even if she came up and like licked the camera I'd be like very happy about that <laughs> um and in terms of kind of like growing a business or an Instagram account how have you like gone about that obviously you've managed to create like a really great following um and you have like your website and stuff like how have you learned how to do that and do you have tips for other people who want to do that so um, a while back, I took one of those free class, like seminars where you sit and you watch someone do a slideshow and they did one about how they were making a travel blog. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna make a travel blog. And so I watched and they said some important like things like um, you need to have a theme, like you need to have something that your Instagram is based off of. This is why I switched from having an all me what like Instagram to an art Instagram because as much as I thought people like to see what I ate for lunch today, they don't want to see what I ate for lunch today. They want to see my art. And so I deleted a lot of pictures or I made a separate account, a personal account, and I started focusing it specifically to my art. And um, all of my pictures kind of look the same. I try to use the same filter because that's what people want. They want to see consistency. And I post every three to seven days if I can. Sometimes I'm just too busy to have anything to post. But I'm consistent and I made my Instagram into a portfolio. So if you wanted to see what my style was like, you can see it because there's 500 pictures of just my art. And it's all just like what I've done, what I can do. And that really helped out because everyone knows what to expect from my account now. And then the other thing that you have to do is you have to learn Instagram guidelines because they change every month. And so that's a hassle, but you should do it because you need to know what's going to how, how you're going to end up going too far. Like, am I going to comment too much? Am I going to follow people too much? And then what worked for me was finding a community. And so I'm really active in the Dungeons and Dragons community, which is why most of my hashtags are Dungeons and Dragons, because I grew up playing d and I know how to play and I love dice. And so I go into the D&D hashtags and I will like other people so that they know I'm aware. Like not everyone's going to find me, but I can find other people. And so yeah. that's what I've been using to build myself up. No, they're and really good tips. And it didn't happen like overnight. Like when I first started this, I had 800 followers and now I have 11,000. Like it's something I've worked with and I've reached out to people. I've done galleries. I became very um, participant in my local community. Like I did the Tucson Comic Con. I did artist spotlights and I did interviews in Tucson. And so I really tried to build my community up too. So a lot of my followers are from Tucson where, where I was born and raised. Yeah, that's, I think it is really important, like, not just online, but if you can, obviously, it's difficult at the moment, but going and actually in real life participating in community events and stuff like I would love to go to a con and do like a panel or like have a stall or something just because I mean, doing these map chats is great seeing other artists, but also like meeting other people who have like supported my maps or support the community in general. I think that's 
that that part's like really important because I, art is about sharing um, your creativity, right? So that's really that's they're really good tips. And um, so you you do commissions, yes? Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. Yeah. So how can people find your commissions? What should they do if they're interested? Um, tell us a bit about the process of how you can have a commission from Shin Cartography. So right now I'm booked. I have like back orders I have people have been waiting for a year to do my map because I'm working 40 to 60 to 70 hours a week right now and so it's very very difficult to be able to draw on top of that when I still have things like laundry or showering or eating yeah or just life admin going outside <laughs> and seeing the sun because my work is NDA like I can't like share it with people so I, I feel like I'm in a dungeon I'm in the basement sitting in front of a, like a computer a tv constantly and so I want to do more, but I have to, I had to make a decision. Like, I love doing Shing. I love drawing, but I also love having a home and eating. So I have to balance out and make sure I make enough revenue to feed when I want to do Shing. Because like last year was great. All I did was art. It was wonderful. I worked at a board game company and I did art and it was wonderful, but I still need a bank account. Yeah. Absolutely. It is difficult trying to like break into that, doing it full time, um, especially with something that's so niche as to like doing fantasy cartography. Um, but it's great that you're getting, you've got so many commissions and I mean, obviously it's going to continue to grow as your followers do. So that'll be really great for you. Um, and then just to kind of like wrap stuff up, um, my final question to people is usually what is your dream cartography project and where do you see your account or shin cartography in general going in the future so a personal goal of mine that i'm slowly working toward is i really would like to have a book of campaign intros with my maps a lot of my maps have backstories and help they help make the world too and so I would like to be able to do more art of the NPCs since I used to draw anime. I'm really excited to get back in the swing of drawing people. And I would love to start doing that. Just having a book of campaign intros with my maps and the people that I put into those. Yeah, that would be really cool. Like there is a few books out there, but I think there's definitely a lot more space for um, people creating their own books and using their artwork to do it. So if you, I definitely support you doing that. Like, that's really cool. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's so exciting. So um, we'll, we'll all be looking out in the next few years for Shin Cartography takes over the book world. <laughs> oh, that'd be so fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming and chatting to me about maps. It's been really lovely to meet you. Um, and yeah, once again, just really love your, um, your maps. And I hope that you... Um, continue to grow and do awesome things <laughs> thank you so much for having me <laughs> no worries okay um i'm going to um end the live now so thanks everyone for watching bye everyone bye. thank you